Thanks to Crucial for sponsoring today's magical computer shenanigans. Hello everybody and welcome back to the happiest channel on earth. Now in today's episode we're going to be taking a look at the Disney NetPal. That's right, a Disney laptop from 2009. Now it's worth noting that this right here was not Disney's first attempt at slapping their logo on the side of a computer. That occurred back in 2004 with the release of the Disney Dream Desk PC, which was a $600 Disney desktop computer, but who am I kidding? You've probably seen Linus's video on that thing already. This time around, Disney decided to partner up with Asus to create a netbook back from the 10 minutes when these things were popular. It sold for $350 and came in two different colors with very Disney sounding names. This right here is the Blue Magic Disney NetPal, and right here we have the Princess Pink NetPal. Spec wise, they're exactly the same on the inside. They've got an Intel Atom running at 1.6 gigahertz, a 160 gigabyte hard drive, and one gigabyte of RAM. Now it's worth noting too that there was another model of the Disney NetPal that was released exclusively through Toys R Us, and it basically the only difference between it is it replaced the 160 gigabyte hard drive with a 16 gigabyte SSD. So in the midst of the Great Recession, if you had $350 to spare and wanted to buy your kid a computer, well, Disney was certainly here for you. Now, what on earth could you do with these things? Well, I mean, with them being netbooks, you can browse the web, read email, do some light office tasks, but all that sounds pretty boring to like a seven-year-old. What would they want to do with this? Well, Disney did include some custom some software on here that we're going to take a look at in a moment, in addition to some themes that you could use to customize the Windows XP installation on here. Yes, these things ran Windows XP, pretty typical for netbooks, but I just found that interesting because the Disney Dream PC from five years prior also ran Windows XP, so yeah, just take with that what you will. Now in terms of design, the only difference between this and like your standard ASUS EPC netbook from this time, in fact, these are EPCs if I don't bump the other one here. This is an EPC and ASUS certainly sold other EPCs with similar hardware. So the main difference here, really the only difference is cosmetics. It's just the Disney tax pretty much. You know, you've got this design here with the princess pink one. You've got these flowery things and hearts and a Disney princess right here. The blue magic one looks like they just slapped a Disney logo on top of a blue Asus netbooks. It looks like really lazily done, but they actually did implement a, a little design by taking the Mickey Mouse head and kind of making it this pattern here in the background. So yeah, it's, it's something at least, but I mean, still, this definitely looks more like just a standard laptop, whereas this one is definitely more colorful and vibrant. Now, in terms of port selection, again, both of these have the same hardware, same port selection and all of that. On the left side, you've got your ethernet jack. That's what's hiding behind here. You've got two USB ports and a microphone and headphone jack. And on the right side, You've got an SD card slot, another USB port, your lock, and you have a VGA port and your power port right there. Now, opening this thing up, you'll see that it's going to be a pretty standard fare here on the inside, although this thing has certainly seen better days. It's missing a lot of keys and the space bar is really uh, jacked up. But yeah, you got your trackpad, which blends into the palm rests here, and you see that design from the front kind of uh, is in here as well. Disney logo right here, where the OEM logo usually would be. And then they also, for the webcam, implemented a Mickey mouse emblem there uh yeah so that's kind of clever probably the most clever thing on here i would say so there you go and we'll just take a look at the inside of the blue magic one as well just to give you a little bit of a comparison but of course it's going to be the same exact setup just with a black bezel instead of a white one which i personally like a lot better but i mean i certainly think the white ones fit in better with the pink design here and again on the trackpad and palm rest we've got that same pattern design from the lid of the laptop so there you go now interestingly enough for whatever reason the person who owned this prior to me it decided to install Raspberry Pi OS on it they went specifically with Raspberry Pi OS so that's what this is running right now whereas this one is actually running the 
original install of Windows XP with all of the software. So we're going to be using it to demo what we have installed on the hard drive, though I will have a link down below to an image of the restore CD that somebody very graciously uploaded to the Internet Archive. So if you have one of these and are looking to restore it back to factory settings, or if you just want to mess around with it in a VM, feel free to check that out. But yeah, let's swap the camera setup and take a look at our Disneyfied Disney Disneyified, whatever, Disney Windows XP modified installation. All right, now I'll be honest, I was kind of torn between which of these two computers to use for the software demo portion here. And I decided on the pink one because not only is there a copy of XP installed with all that Disney OEM software, but also because this was used by somebody. There's user accounts on here, they installed some additional programs, and so I thought it'd be kind of cool just to explore this a bit and see what somebody was using this laptop or this netbook for. I know I could have just restored the other one running Linux from that factory image that I talked about, and perhaps we'll do that in a future video and go through that process. If you guys want to see that, be sure to let me know. But evidently, somehow, this copy of Super Optimizer got installed on here, which is one of these like, oh my god, look at all these problems you have on your PC, pay us to fix them program, and all these are just like really like, oh my god, like invalid shortcuts, no way, and then you fix it now, and I'm sure it's gonna, you have to register it, and let's see how much this thing costs. It's probably going to want to open up a web page here. Look at that. We got Google Toolbar as well. This thing keeps showing up in these videos. I don't know what it is, man. But yeah, so we got Google Toolbar. Some of these programs will actually fix the problems, but it's, it's just scareware to get you to pay for stuff that you don't need. But anyways, we'll just quit out of it for now. And I found this hilarious. I have to think that this was this kid's parent and the kid installed Minecraft on here and they were playing it so much that the parents just renamed the Minecraft icon, do not play. Or maybe the kid renamed it because they were bored of Minecraft and didn't know how to, you know, remove the icon. I don't know. But yeah, I just found that really funny. I think I'm just going to make a new user account here for myself just so uh, that we can kind of start fresh here. Yeah, I know what I said earlier in this clip, but I would like to see if... Windows XP does anything different when you create a new user account and log into it for the first time. See if there's any like Disney pizzazz or something that happens. So these are the default icons that uh, come on the desktop. And here is the default desktop wallpaper, which you'd think would go pretty well with the blue color. If we go into properties here and go to desktop, it is called NetPal Window Default Wallpaper. So yeah, really, really great name there. Asus also bundled a bunch of their EPC wallpapers as well. So let's see if we can find one here that maybe goes with the pink a little bit better um i guess we could go with this white pattern maybe yeah that i guess that kind of works really with anything so yeah there you go and some of these programs like malwarebytes anti-malware and google chrome did not come pre-installed they were installed by the previous user but yeah there's definitely a ton of programs in here and what we're most interested in here to start off with is hyperdesk from the skins factory you see we have two separate themes one for each of the colors so we're just going to go with the pink one in this case and when you apply the theme, it will apply the, well, the theme itself, which will take effect on things like the start menu, taskbar, window, titles, all that stuff. You've got custom icons and the wallpaper, which I think if we go to options here, uh, oh, I never mind, there is a pink wallpaper. There it is. So we will just apply that. Yeah, I got to say, this is a pretty nice theme here. I mean, we'll go to like my documents and you can take a look at the various icons and how they modified the title bars and everything they also centered the window titles which is a nice touch in addition to that we do have some icons from disney on the desktop as well we've got two web shortcuts to disney.com and to their online game site we have parental controls which we'll touch on in a moment we also have radio disney which as far as i can tell just plays radio disney on your computer so it's a little player here you can change through some skins and like oh look at that you can also send a shout out as well assuming this even still works we're not on the internet right now but uh yeah so you could apparently type out a submission here and submit that and assuming we were on your information has been sent no it hasn't we're not on the internet freaking moron okay we'll get out of that and yeah so parental controls this ties into the i would say the main suite of disney programs that they've bundled on here and that is magic desktop now the parental controls portion of that 
that appears to be just a rebranded version of this Easy Bits program. And this is just like an info panel. I don't even know why it's really on here because it just literally tells you this is like going to help and about in a program. It just says, this is what it is. Here's the build number, view the license agreement and close. That's it. Because you actually get to all the parental controls settings through this Magic Desktop program. So we're going to launch this right now. Now, when I launch this off camera, this thing takes over your entire desktop and it actually locks you out from opening up task manager like you can't close this program without going into the close option that it has what i did there that's like me pressing the windows key which is interesting because you see how that flies out doesn't this look like the charms menu from windows 8 i can't press Control alt delete i can't alt tab i can't do Control shift escape can i do windows key l Okay, I can do that at least, so I can still lock the computer. But yeah, there is this menu down here. Okay, preset password is 0000. Wait a second, no freaking way. That's the Windows, is, is this a new version of this or something? Oh yeah, okay, so this is an updated version. This was released in 2016. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense because I was saying to myself, there's no way they got all those UI elements right years before Microsoft officially implemented them in Windows. I just heard the word magic in Magic Desktop and thought this had to be a piece of Disney software because they use the word magic in everything. But no, this is just its own thing. You can probably download it right now, assuming this company is still around. The parental controls thing here that brings up this about dialogue actually says that it's a Disney branded version of the Inspiris platform from Easy Bits, which I assume is the predecessor to Magic Desktop top here and this was the company that disney chose to partner with to create the parental control stuff for the NetPal here. And it's not like that was anything unique to this. There were a ton of companies that had parental control software. In fact, Microsoft implemented it in Windows with Windows Vista. Yeah, there are some other Disney pieces of software. If we go to all programs and go to the Disney folder, we've got Mix Central and Pix 3.1. Now, Mix Central was, this is like a music focused program. I think it's a media player actually. Yeah, so you got music, images, videos. Let's uh, go to just sample music here so we'll go to my music and we'll import our songs here and so yeah we can just double click on this or i guess just click on it once click here play song can't play a whole lot of it because content id would be on me pretty fast there so yeah the best way i can describe this it's like disney's itunes because there's also a store built into it where you can go to browse for like disney songs and i believe TV show episodes and, and clips and that sort of thing uh, to where you can just buy that and then you can consume that content right from here. But yeah, then you can also enter like a mini mode here. So just like Windows Media Player had, you know, you can shrink it down and can you resize this at all? I guess you can. So that's as small as it will go. And of course, being Disney, they have to implement Mickey Mouse into like practically everything. So the seat controls over here or the you know previous and next song and the play and pause button is in the shape of a Mickey Mouse head. And then you've got Disney Pix 3.1. Got some nice intro animations going on there. And speaking of intros, this is the intro for today's sponsor spot on Crucial's System Scanner, a free and easy to use utility that lets you view compatible memory and storage upgrade options for your computer in minutes. Yes, even if that computer is a Disney NetPal. Would you ever need to upgrade the hard drive in this thing to a two terabyte MX500 SSD? Probably not, but it's guaranteed to work or your money back. The scanner itself is incredibly easy to use, and that's what I really like about it. You're just a single download and a couple clicks away from viewing a list of upgrade options, all without snooping on your personal data. And as a thank you for sitting through this ad, they're offering everybody who tries the scanner through my link in the video description 15% off your order of all crucial products if you use code MICHAEL15 at checkout. So be sure to check them out, and huge thanks again to Crucial for making today's episode possible. And you can see it's designed in a very similar way to that media player program so you've got the same like option menu up here how you switch between different modes so edit picks albums and then this is bobblehead oh so you can create okay yeah we're definitely have to mess around with this a little bit here so let's actually try to create a 
Oh gosh, everything is so freaking large. It's like all these icons here. But let's import something. We'll just go to my pictures here and... What, do you just import the entire folder? Is there anything in my pictures? I mean, there should be. Yeah. I mean, it's not even showing up as like a folder that we can expand. Yeah, what's that about? Can you only import certain file types? I mean, but these are what? Like JPEGs, right? They're JPEGs. Why, why, why can't we open that up in here? All right, well, I think what I'll do is just open up MS Paint here. Let's open up the Sunset. And then we will save that as a bitmap to our desktop. There we go. So I've got the bitmap of the sunset sample picture imported in here. Let's just start here with, oh gosh, what do we want to do? Let's, let's, let's import some text here, or add some text rather. You've got a list of fonts here. Oh, look at this scroll bar that's so freaking tiny. Please tell me that you can... Oh my gosh. So you can't actually start typing out the name of the font that you want like you can in a standard Windows dialog. So we got to scroll down here and then we got to find the font that we want. Not that one. Can we at least do the arrow key up? We can't do that either. All right. So look, what is that? I'm like selecting. I'm right here. Oh, that is really obnoxious. That's really bad. Look at that. That's ter okay, whatever. We're just gonna select that. We got a slider here. We can make it like, yeah, 69. Yeah, that'll be pretty nice. So we'll type out our, our font, you know, hello world. I think we just click off of it and then, okay, we can resize it here and move it around. So we definitely wanna increase that. Oh, look at that. That's amazing. Oh, isn't that beautiful? We can rotate it a little bit. Let's go with a colorize. Oh yeah, there we go. That's, that's amazing. Okay. And then maybe we'll change some of these attributes as well. Yeah. I think that's looking like a beautiful image. So I think we're ready to save that. So let's save this masterpiece. Oh, we have to export it. That's right. So we just saved it like in this collection here in the program so we can open this back up definitely want to go with high location and we'll just do it on the desktop that's fine export it there and there we go there's our masterpiece and it saves it as a jpeg what is that now can we open this up because if it can't open an image that it itself exported that is about the dumbest thing that i've ever seen in my life okay so it's definitely something with the sample photo uh that it just does not like because again i mean i can go maybe it's with it being in the my pictures folder i don't know like let me try to or no well i already made a copy of it right on the desktop or no i don't think i did because that's the one that we modified and will opened up with paint and then you know saved and everything so go to my pictures and then just drag like blue hills out to the desktop here oh there it is. So it's just because it's in the sample pictures folder or in my pictures and then inside the sample pictures directory inside of that. That's really odd because you can't like I'm double clicking on this. I can't get inside of it. It doesn't show any options over here. I can't expand the folder like the documents here. You know, I can expand that. There's a folder in here. I can't expand that. So for whatever reason, it doesn't like pictures in my pictures, which is where you would save pictures to usually that. OK, that doesn't really make any sense. All right, so last but not least, let's see what this bobblehead thing is because I'm really curious about this. So you can pick either a video or a postcard to customize. So let's just go with video, I guess. Oh, I see. So it's putting your face in the video or in the postcard. So select the heads you'd like to use. Oh, I guess we have to make a head down here. So we don't have any photos of people on here so we're just gonna pick like <laughs> we're just gonna pick the blue hills sample photo here and we'll say like that that's the head and then we'll uh cut it i guess and yep there we go that's the head we cut out <laughs> select the chin and the bottom lip okay so this is gonna allow the mouth to move. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be amazing. Okay, that's fine, we'll finish. <laughs> and then we have to do that with three of them. You can see how this program can be just abused to do things that it was probably never designed to do. So what do we do? Do we drag them up here? Like how do you, um, how do you get them? Cause, okay, you just have to double click on them. So I, I don't want this one. So we'll select that one and that one and then hit next. And oh my gosh, you can customize it with accessories. <laughs> oh no, oh gosh. Okay, so let's just do that. Let's get <laughs> this like birthday party hat thing and we'll get these, <laughs> these sunglasses. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. This is so bad. And then for the last one... Okay, that's all the way to the right on this list here. So we'll go all the way to the left. Let's see what we got. Okay, so we got some more sunglasses here. We're definitely going to grab those. You know what? I think we're just going to go with that. We're just going to pop the sunglasses on there. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, it has to install something for it to actually work. Okay. The installer just says Disney Picks 3.1, so I assume it's a component of it that it didn't install by default. Oh no. So it's <laughs> so it is playing music. This is the most ridiculous thing that I've ever All right, we're just going to pause that. I'm not sure if that music is copyrighted or not, but we're absolutely saving that. Let's just export that masterpiece there. So yeah, that, that's just one of the video templates. There were a bunch in there. And I can hear the fans spinning up. Oh my gosh, I wonder what. Let's do a control shift escape here. I'm curious what our performance is looking like. This thing is, oh yeah, that CPU is being maxed out. There we go. You know what this reminds me of? Those Windows desktop dancers, like 100%. I mean, just seeing them dance around in this video here is is what made me think of that. So we'll close out of that and let's maybe do another one just before we end off this video. I'd like to do the postcard thing. So I assume it's gonna be like the same process just with a still image instead of a video. So what's this one here? Love, oh boy, this is gonna be amazing. Okay, so we'll select the love one and we'll do <laughs> We'll pick these two here and we can customize them again. So, you know, we'll put like the sunglasses on. This is about the best. <laughs> like, I don't know whose idea it was to make this, but this definitely has some potential, I think, to be a meme or something. Just having people go in here and making all sorts of just ridiculous looking faces. Because you can use any image, obviously. You don't have to use a face of somebody you can just take a, like a static image of a scenery <laughs> like the sample photos here and then it's just <laughs> oh my god really disney you have to put your copyright info in here come on that's really obnoxious now wait a second can you play it is there motion i wouldn't think there is i mean nothing's happening i don't know what exactly that's here for because it's just a postcard i guess maybe they didn't bother to remove these controls from the postcard creation and they just left it in here, but we can save this and this should save a lot faster than the video. So let's just export it. And yeah, there we go, already done. So we'll open it up in Windows Explorer here. And there we go. So this is the photo. We can zoom in on it here. So there's, <laughs> I love you. Is that what it says up at the top? Yeah, I love you with these. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is so good. But like, this is the most freaking Disney, of course, classic Disney having to put their freaking logo and copyright text over everything. Do they have it on the video here? Let's see. No, they didn't. Look at that. There's nothing there. So it's them just like standing in front of a brick wall with graffiti on it and just bopping around, I guess, having a good time. And I'm sure it would look much better if you actually took it seriously and put faces of real people on it. But, you know, I wonder what resolution this is. I'm guessing, I mean, it kind of looks like it's 360p. Oh, there it is, 800 by 600, and it's 45 seconds long, 1,163 kilobits per second, and it's just over six megabytes in size. But yeah, so that's the bobblehead functionality in <laughs> Disney Picks which is definitely my favorite uh, thing in here. And that pretty much wraps it up for the Disney NetPal netbook thing that exists. And I pretty much knew I had to talk about it when I discovered this. So thank you to everybody for watching. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And as always, I will see you all in the next video.